Welcome back to Usapang Bayan at kasama pa rin po natin ang ating uh, presidential aspirant na si Ambassador uh, Roy Senyeres. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, marami hong nag-aspire na maging presidente at uh, yung iba nga ho eh, humahabol pa. So sa inyong palagay ho ba o sa inyong plataforma, bakit, ano ho ba ang pagkakaiba sa inyo at sa mga ibang presidential aspirants kung bakit palagay nyo kayo ho ang dapat iboto ng taong bayan? Qualification-wise, that is a non-issue because, you know, in my 30 years of government service, I have held so many responsible uh, positions in government. Pero sa plataforma tayo tututok because the other candidates are equally qualified. Eh. Pero sa plataforma, the reason why I filed my certificate of candidacy on the last day of the deadline because I was still praying over it and then I was trying to analyze the platform of the other candidates and none of them have spoken has spoken against contractualization uh, I said my god if they are not if they have no plans to take up the cudgels for the 15 million uh, fellow workers of ours in this country who are known as the contractuals or the endo or the 555 because they are being laid off from work every five months. And we are not talking here only of one or two or one million workers. We are talking here of 15 million uh, workers. They are all over. They are work, working in giant malls, in big restaurants, chain restaurants, in factories all over the country. And their number right now is already 15 million. And job order employment in government. The government which is supposed to enforce the security of tenure clause of the Constitution is instead the one uh, violating it. Oh, let me just explain to you why this is not, this is unconstitutional and illegal. The Constitution says that every worker in this country must have security of tenure. Bawat manggagawa sa bansang ito ay dapat may katatagan sa trabaho. As a matter of fact, in several cases decided by the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said that a Filipino worker may consider his job as property because he cannot just be terminated from work unless there is a just or authorized cause uh, in, the, uh, in the labor code. Pangalawa, yung labor code naman natin, sinasabi yan sa Article 280 in Fundance of the Constitution that when the kind of job, for example, uh, sales girl, when the kind of job that the sales girl, sales girl does is necessary or desirable to the business of the most, then it should be considered as regular. Even on day one, that's reported for work. The only, the only exception if, if the worker is a seasonal worker, like a worker in the banana plantation. Pagkatapos ng planting ng banana, goodbye, kasi seasonal ka eh. Yung mga project employees, ang paggawa si Don George Chua ng building. <laughs> ha? nag siya ng contractor. The contractor ngayon, ay, after na tapos na yung building ni Mr. Chua, ay, goodbye kasi project employee ka. Ganon din sa mga casual employment as well as probationary employment. But otherwise, every worker must have security of tenure because that is mandated by the highest law of the land, the Constitution. At meron pa yours and rates na... Uh, Supreme Court rulings. For instance, in the in the case of Shello versus NLRC, the Supreme Court condemned contractualization as a deceitful agreement being utilized by unscrupulous employers in this country to reap undeserved profits at the expense of their employees. In another case of uh, Brent School versus uh, Zamora, the high court, the highest court of the land, ruled that contractualization max the law tinutuya ang batas but why what why is this going on on a very widely pervasive scale na nilili of every five months maghihintay na naman ng another five months bago ma-rehire in the meantime ang mga anak nila tumitigil sa trabaho i mean so tumitigil sa pag-aaral gutom ang pamilya and then wala silang housing dahil hindi sila member ng pag-ibig Hindi sila mga kahiram kahit 1,000 lang sa banko dahil wala silang stable credit standing. So, yun ang, yun ang problema. And I did not see this 
kind of advocacy on the part of the other presidential balls. So I decided I might as well run because I will. Uh, I want to take up the cudgels for 15 million times their families. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, just to talk a little bit about the contractualization and security of tenure. Yes, yes. You know? Even in countries, for example, like Japan, which has been known to have uh, security of tenure you know, as a cultural uh, thing, no, has modified its stance in that in the light of, uh, I guess, modern realities. No? Ang, ang question ko ho eh, kung halimbawa ho gagawin natin na mga permanent employees yan at saka yung mga kumpanya naman, dahil kasi sa hirap rin ho ng ating competition sa global markets. No? For example, mas mataas tayo sa kuryente, mas matataas ang ating labor wage. Ang problema ho naman ng mga uh, employers no, ay magiging uh, hindi naman sila makakapag-hire ng pangmatagalan kung hindi naman rin sila competitive. At sarami-rami ho naman sa ating mga kababayan na underemployed at saka unemployed, hindi ho kaya mas lumaki ang unemployment rate natin dahil kasi mas lalong matatakot ang mga kumpanya mag-hire kung hindi sila siguradong mai-sustain nila ang employment nito mga ito? Yeah, that's, a very, uh, <clears throat> that's a very introspective question. Thank you for that. Kasi ang problema ng unemployment, underemployment, Filipino diaspora, iba ang solusyon eh. Ang problema ng contractualization, iba rin ang solusyon. Ang solusyon sa contractualization is to implement the law so that they will become permanent. But it does not mean that just because they are already permanent, they cannot be terminated anymore. No, they may be. Because under the uh, labor code, there are, there are uh, several reasons why employers may terminate their workers anytime. Serious misconduct, willful disobedience, willful breach of trust of the employee's uh, confidence and uh, habit, gross and habitual neglect, you can terminate. There is also such a thing as authorized causes, such as retrenchment to prevent losses, installation of labor-saving devices, uh, redundancy, and uh, uh, total cessation of business operations due to business losses. So there are so many company prerogatives to terminate an employee, but not on the basis of contractualization, whereby uh, you terminate them every five months if they are very competent because they, you do not want them, them to become regular. So, and on the other hand, the solution to unemployment, underemployment that the Filipino diaspora is to be serious about our drive against corruption because corruption is the very mother of this uh, things known as poverty, underemployment, joblessness, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Sir, speaking of contractualization, assuming po na umalma yung private sector on the argument of mataas po yung um, doing business dito sa Pilipinas, how would you address that matter? Well, you know, contractuals are also paid by and large in accordance with the minimum wage law. The only problem is they are not being made permanent. Mm -hmm. Kaya the, the employer, some unscrupulous employer, uh, are actually uh, acting like dictators. You, know? mm -hmm. you behave, otherwise I will not rehire you, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But there are... As I have said, there are ways to terminate an employee. Um, actually, one of our other guests on our show, si Attorney Kapunan, Kapunan had mentioned that yung wage rates to natin sa Pilipinas is higher than other countries. And in spite of the higher minimum wage rates that we have, hirap na hirap po ang ating mga manggagawa. Dahil kasi ho, napakataas ng ating mga taxes at saka yung mga cost ng goods natin ho, eh, napakataas rin. Agree ho ba kayo dun sa statement na yun na kailangan natin siguro bawasan yung ating income tax rate? Alam mo, agree, agree ako dyan eh. Mm -hmm. Kasi I was labor at as a to uh, the United States, no? Uh, 1989 to 1994. Yun ang, ang tawag dyan ay Reagan, Reaganomics eh. 
uh, trickle down economics. Kasi kapag binawasan mo ang tax ng mga manggagawa, in effect, you are increasing their income. Kasi wala, wala lang mga withholding, wala lang mga deduction. And so therefore, lumaki ang sahod ng mga manggagawa, gagamitin din nila yan para mag-consume eh, ng mga commodities. No? Every time that they would buy, for instance, a kilo of rice, eh nakakadagdag din yan sa GDP natin. At uh, ano din naman yan? Pakikailaman din naman ang VAT yan. So pupunta rin sa government. But on the other hand, it will even improve our GDP in the sense that what is how is GDP defined? GDP, gross domestic products, as George knows this and rates, is the total value of goods and services consumed in any given economy. So therefore, kapag nag gumili ka ng uh, isang kilong isda, GDP yan, eh kung wala kang pambili ng isda, di wala sa walang, walang pinag-usapang GDP. <laughs> Actually, uh, gusto ko rin ho tanungin sa inyo ang inyong posisyon, no? Like, kasi ang sinasabi ng ating current administration, eh medyo reluctant sila bawasan yung income tax rate. Like, kasi sinasabi nila, kailangan natin yung taxes para naman mapabigay ng improved services sa ating mga kababayan, no? Ang gusto kong itanong sa inyo, kumo na sa uh, Congress kayo ngayon at nagdadaan sa yung budget sa inyo, hindi ko humaintindihan na karamihan ho ng ating mga major infrastructure projects, kagaya ng mga power plants, road projects, and things like that, inaano ho yan, eh, hindi ba? Pinapublic, eh, pinaprivatize ho lahat yan. So yung mga taxes na nakokolekta, hindi naman ho napupunta doon sa mga proyektong yan. Ang nangyayari ho ay eh, nagiging private funded yan. Tapos Double, double wami pa ho tayo dahil kasi nagbabayad na tayo ng taxes para sa servisyong gano'n na ang nangyayari ay e, binigay sa mga private sector. Nagbabayad ho ulit tayo. Kagaya niya, nagbabayad tayo ng mga toll fees, mataas ho yung ating uh, pagbayad sa mga kuryente. Ano ho bang masasabi niyo tungkol doon? At saka pag nagbabayad tayo ng toll fees, hindi natin alam kung bawing-bawi na sila, tuloy-tuloy pa rin. Wala mo lang lagi inform sa atin, oh, bawi na ito, kaya ta tigil na, wala nang bayad ang mga tol. Eh, hindi lang ho tumi hindi lang ho tumitigil kung hindi tinataasan pa ho yung mga rates pa, pa. Pati, ang, pati sa tubig at lahat ho. Ang reasoning eh uh, para sa maintenance, pero nobody has given us a report, accurate report to the effect na matagal na itong tollway na ito, wala matagal nang uh, bawing-bawi ito. Eh, alam mo sa tingin ko corruption na naman yan eh. Hindi Kasi may pwede, share ang government. Oh, eh. Hindi ho ba pwede as uh, part of your uh, congressional initiatives no in lawmaking, hindi nyo pa pwedeng investigahan yung mga ganyan? Eh, dapat inaimbestigahan talaga yan. Talaga yan. Pero alam nyo ba ho, nung hindi pa ako kongresista, years ago, may mga anomalia dyan eh. Na naimbestigahan ng isang uh, toll company na nagpakalat pala ng envelope doon kaya walang nangyari sa investigation. <laughs> eh, eh, Kaya dapat eh, kailangan eh, ma maitigil na natin to a certain extent ang corruption sa bansang ito. At I have been in government for 35 years and I have I never have any single case of corruption in the Ombudsman. Very good. So, uh, we'll just have to stop for a commercial break. Makakasama pa rin po natin si OFW Party List, Representative Ambassador Roy Sanyere sa ating pagbabalik.